Now we're going to turn to liquidity ratios. Recall that liquidity ratios assess the company's short-term cash position and its ability to handle immediate financial needs and obligations. We're going to look at three key liquidity ratios. Let's start by looking at the current ratio and the quick ratio. Liquidity ratios are also typically quoted as a multiple rather than as a percentage. With all liquidity ratios, generally the higher the number, the better. But as I said before, there are different benchmarks for different industries. The current ratio looks at current assets compared to current liabilities. So a current ratio above one indicates that a company has more current assets than current liabilities, suggesting it has sufficient liquidity to cover its short-term obligations. The second ratio, the quick ratio, is a more conservative version of the current ratio. Instead of taking all current assets, we deduct or remove inventory. So why do we deduct inventory? Well, the rationale for excluding inventory from the quick ratio is to assess a company's immediate liquidity without relying on the potential sale of inventory. Inventory represents goods held by a company for sale or use in the normal course of business, but it may take time to convert inventory into cash. So by excluding inventory from the calculation, the quick ratio provides a more conservative and immediate measure of a company's ability to meet short-term obligations. The quick ratio is sometimes called or referred to as the acid test ratio. Our final liquidity ratio is EBITDA to interest. It is also referred to as the interest coverage ratio. It's used to assess a company's ability to cover its interest payments with earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. It measures the company's capacity to service its interest obligations and indicates the level of risk associated with its debt. The ratio is calculated by dividing EBITDA by the interest expense. A higher number is better, but as I mentioned many times already, it's important to note that the interpretation of the EBITDA to interest expense ratio should consider industry norms, as different industries may have varying benchmarks for acceptable levels of coverage. We are done almost all the calculations we need to do on this sheet. If you look at my screenshot, you'll see that growth trends and everything below has already been completed for you. So this is the last thing we'll need to do. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to look at liquidity ratios. Here we have, we need to get some items from the balance sheet. So we need to go to the financial statements because we don't have a lot of these items on our um, sheet, although we do have a few. So let's do current assets, control page up. Let's find current assets. That's total current assets, which is row 79. And current liabilities, control page up, which is row 91. Then we have current assets minus inventory. So we have current assets, and I'm going to find inventory above. And then we have current liabilities. And finally, we have EBITDA right here, just above. And then we have interest expense, and it's the gross interest expense. We can get that from our effective interest rate calculation, which as I scroll down, sorry, let's find it. There we go. Our interest expense is in row 61, 2461. You know the drill. Here we go, copy it across, control R. Let's look at some of these numbers. So for big retailer, it doesn't have enough current assets to cover its current liabilities in any of the years. And then when we strip out inventory, that number drops quite dramatically. But we'll need to see how other retailers in this sector do to really judge if that's good or bad. Because maybe in this sector, you don't necessarily need a lot of current assets to cover current liabilities because cash walks in the door every day. Feel free to go right to small retailer. You know the drill. If you want to practice again using mid retailer, join me in the next lesson. Here we are in mid retailer. Let's actually do the same thing. So we're going to get current assets. Whoop. Just a second, current assets, and then Control page up, row 79. Current liabilities, control page up, row 91. Current assets minus inventory. We have inventory in our asset utilization ratios. That's 8456, row 92, I think it is. Current liabilities is the same. We have EBITDA right above 
and we have interest expense, that's gross interest expense, when we calculated the effective interest rate, so that's quite a ways above. Let's just go up. There we go, effective interest rate row 62, no, row 61. We're going to copy that across. We can see that the liquidity ratios for mid-retailer are slightly better than for big retailer. In several years, the ratio is above one, so there's more than enough current assets to cover current liabilities. And when we take inventory out, the number doesn't drop as far as it did for big retailer. Okay, we are done the calculations. Now we're gonna move on to things like visualization, trend analysis, and benchmarking before we finish off by looking at the DuPont pyramid of ratios. Okay, see you soon.